Dear friends in Christ, once a bishop came to a particular parish to administer the sacrament of confirmation. He asked a girl for a definition of Holy Trinity. The girl answered, the Holy Trinity is three persons in one God. The girl answered in a very soft voice and thus the bishop could not hear properly. The bishop said, I did not understand what you said. The young girl replied, Bishop, you are not supposed to understand because the Trinity is a mystery. Today, the church celebrates the feast of the Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity is the central doctrine of the church. And we see the presence of Trinitarian God in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we see in a very vivid manner, especially at the time of the Annunciation to Mary, at the time of the baptism of Jesus, at the time of the transfiguration of Jesus and at the time of ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven. Though the Holy Trinity is the central doctrine of the church, many have difficulties to understand this doctrine or concept of the Holy Trinity or the Trinitarian God. Thus various theologians over the centuries have tried to explain the concept or the doctrine of Holy Trinity with various analogies. Some have tried to explain with fire. The fire can be seen or can be experienced through its flame, through its light and through its heat. So one fire can be experienced in three different ways. Some have tried to explain with water. Water can be seen or can be perceived or can be experienced in various forms. Water can be perceived or experienced or seen through its liquid form water, through its spirit form, steam, through its solid form, ice. So one water, one element can be perceived in three various forms. But yet, we may find it difficult to understand. St. Augustine says, if you have understood then what you have understood is not God. If you have understood, then what you have understood is not God. Because with our limited knowledge and senses, it is impossible to understand, to grasp the whole concept of God together. But yet, every day, we express our faith and belief in this one God and in three persons. At the beginning of every liturgical celebrations, at the beginning of every big activities or small activities, we begin with in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes we may not verbalize, but we put the sign of the cross. That is the expression of our faith in this Trinitarian God. But what we can learn from this Trinitarian God? We can learn three things. We can learn the Trinitarian model of love. In the human form of love, we have I and you or she or he or they. But in the Trinitarian model of love, 
there is no i you he she it or they but there is only we and us and second we also learn the trinitarian model of unity the three persons are different persons but they are one god they share the same divine nature there is no one up or one down there is equality they are inseparable they are intertwined that is the trinitarian model of unity then third there is a trinitarian model of function god is seen as a creator god the son is seen as a redeemer god the holy spirit is seen as sanctifier so god the father god the son god the holy spirit though they have a different functions no one overlaps the other function each one respects the function or the works of the other that is the trinitarian model of function these three things the trinitarian model of love trinitarian model of unity trinitarian model of function or functionality is essential for the humanity to learn today we see poverty in the world we see violence in the world we see killings in the world we see indifferences in the world and all these are results of the anti trinitarian mindset the poverty exceeds because of the anti trinitarian mindset violence exists because of the anti trinitarian mindset indifferences exist because of anti trinitarian mindset the death of the george floyd is the result of the anti trinitarian mindset the migrants in india could not reach their home they died on their way to their villages this also is the result of the anti trinitarian mindset we could not protect them thus the trinitarian spirituality which is the trinitarian model of love trinitarian model of unity trinitarian model of functionality is essential especially today in this world how can i exercise the trinitarian model of love how can i exercise the trinitarian model of unity how can i exercise the trinitarian model of function if i can see and respect the other as one of the trinitarian in my life then the feast of holy trinity is meaningful if we get into the mindset of trinity where we can practice the trinitarian model of love the we and us no i you he she it or they then this feast is meaningful where we can work together where we can exercise the trinitarian model of unity without classifying the other person with various criteria one up one down because of color because of caste because of creed then this feast becomes meaningful when we don't hinder the function of the other person but help 
to function well then we exercise the trinitarian model of function and then this feast become a meaningful one for us today we see the anti trinitarian mindset can i can we promote through our lives the trinitarian mindset in this world that is the greatest challenge lies before you and me amen